iPhone 12 mini one year later. Still one of my favorite iPhones of all time and even with the iPhone 13 mini, I mean, it's not the 12 mini or 13 mini that matters, it's the form factor of the iPhone. Reason being is this iPhone really does offer a lot. Now sales for the iPhone 12 mini have not been too good apparently and it seems that this year will be the last for the mini lineup. What is going on everybody? Welcome back, MTG here with another episode. Now if you're new to the channel, hi there. Today I'm going to share my thoughts and opinions on the iPhone 12 mini and if you still pick this up now that we finally have the iPhone 13 mini. But before I do begin, I'd really appreciate if you can give the video a thumbs up and turn on the bell notifications as it does help out the YouTube algorithm and will help push my content out to more people. Anyway, let's dive right in. The design and build of the 12 mini has really grown on me and I'm still in awe. This is the iPhone 12 but smaller hence the mini in its name and it's the same with the 13. I'm going to kind of try to reference uh, 13 and 13 mini because I mean they're the newer models for 2021. The mini lineup is actually smaller than the iPhone SE 2. iPhone SE has a 4.7 inch screen but it's not really edge to edge like the iPhone 12 mini. Now the 12 mini, it's 5.4 inch OLED panel has been amazing in my use from watching videos to texting to editing photos. It's a good thing that the phone is made out of glass, which supports wireless charging, which by the way is the only way I charge my phone. I only use MagSafe nowadays. I wish the iPhone would add USB-C, but I'm not getting my hopes up and I'm, I don't think Apple's going to do that anyway. It's industrial design with flatter sides has been much easier to hold and it fits perfectly in my hand. The fact that I can reach from one side to the other is just more comforting. The notch is something I've gotten used to since we've had the same size notch since the iPhone 10, which came out in 2017. And with the iPhone 13 series, it looks like we're getting a 20% smaller notch. Uh, it's width is going to be smaller, but length is just a little bit uh, taller. So, I mean, we're going to have to see that in person at the time of this recording. I don't have it in hands. But anyway, the 12 mini's dual camera system has also been great. It's an iPhone, but I'll dive into that in a little bit. Now I did drop it on concrete and if you notice it did get scuffed pretty bad but that just shows that even when used caseless it'll still hold up well. I mean I don't like how it looks but it still performs well like there's with the dings and the scuffs and whatnot it still performs really well. With my iPhone 12 mini I went ahead and downloaded the iOS 15 beta on day one and I've enjoyed the new software update. Now, the iPhone 12 mini is shipped with iOS 14 and that was like the huge like uh, design overhaul kind of with adding like widgets and app library and all that. So iOS 15 was just like a incremental upgrade, but nonetheless, I still enjoy it. Up until then, iOS 14 was great too. Like I said, with the introduction of those widgets and the app library and whatnot. It was a new feeling for not just me, but for many users because I mean, we had those on Android for so many years. Many users have been able to customize their phones to their liking, so thank you Apple for adding that. Now iOS 15 is now the newest software update, and having it on the 12 mini has not affected my performance at all. I mean, there's some bugs here and there with betas, but in my general use, I haven't really come across anything too bad. Look, with iOS and whatever iteration it is, you can always rely on it, and you know that it will serve you well. I have absolutely no complaints with software. And also the fact that Apple supports, well, let's put it this way. Um, your iPhone is going to get like five, maybe even six, if you're really pushing it, six years of software updates. That is awesome. Now I'm thinking about a six year old iPhone device. How well is it going to perform and hold up with that newest software update? Who knows? For those of you who have a really old iPhone, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but the fact that you're getting that software update on day one, from Apple is just great. It's not like Android uh, where you have to wait with a bunch of, you know, like Samsung or OnePlus. You have to wait uh, after the official Android update came out. So whether you're in the market for the new iPhone 13 lineup or older devices like the iPhone 12 series or even the 11 uh, and the iPhone SE, which are now a part of Apple's uh, current lineup in 2021, you shouldn't worry about software usage as well as software updates. One year later, the 12 mini's camera has been, surprise, surprise, amazing. It's a champ, like a boss. 
I can rely on it for any situation, especially for my YouTube channel. I've been using it for A-roll, for B-roll, for uh, editing photos, for sometimes even for voiceover. It's been great. Like I use that as a camera for my videos and for the work I do. I'm glad that the second lens of the 12 mini is an ultra wide lens. I prefer ultra wide and I think a lot of other people prefer ultra wide over telephoto lens. Like I said, I can use it for my YouTube videos because video quality has been superb. I mean, to even talking about iPhone SE, the video quality ha on that has been great and you definitely see it in my videos. Photos also come out very well on the iPhone 12 mini. That's obviously no surprise there either. I've been enjoying the fact that I am able to take photos or videos one-handed because of its compact size. Now iPhones are proof that you don't need a high-end camera to take everyday photos or videos or even to start a YouTube channel. I started my YouTube channel with not an iPhone, an LG G3 at the time, but now even with uh, with where I've gotten so far, I do have a, a DSLR, but I am also using my iPhone for my YouTube channel. So goes to show that I mean you don't need the latest and greatest you don't need the highest end camera you can still go ahead and create uh, content with your iPhone and even if you went and picked up the 12th this year or you're gonna go pick up the 13 or something older like the iPhone 11 don't hesitate and go ahead and create content one year later this 12th mini has become one of my main camera devices for the channel now you are getting new features with the iPhone 13 series like cinematic mode and macro photography and whatnot, but that shouldn't really be a main reason for skipping on the iPhone 12 series. Anyway, I'll be dropping some sample images I've taken with the iPhone 12 mini. The one thing I'm really bummed about with the 12 mini is that's no surprise either. It's battery life. Okay, I know it's a smaller device, which means a smaller battery, but when you come from devices that last you the entire day and have super duper fast charging and that doesn't let you down, well, the 12 mini hasn't really held up well in my usage. It's still a good thing to know that the standby time is on point, so I give Apple credit for that. And it looks like my battery health is at 99%. Now MagSafe charging has been my go-to charging like I said earlier uh, and I love it. I really don't charge it through its lightning connector anymore. It's always MagSafe or wireless charging. Look, the phone was bound to come with a small battery and when you add more features that require battery like 5G, well, you should know what you're getting yourself into. And to be honest, I, I did get used to it. I'll have to end up charging the phone by the afternoon since I am a heavy user. Sometimes there are days where I don't really you know, pick up the iPhone and use it as a heavy user so i don't need to worry about you know charging it every single day in the afternoon but when i do that's typically when i have to kind of charge it so for those heavy users and folks who love having a longer lasting battery i'm sorry but the 12 mini is a no-go however if you are a light user that only has a phone just for calling texting and browsing the web here and there you shouldn't need to worry about the 12 mini battery and i'm also going to add the fact that there are days that I use the iPhone 12 mini to record video. And on those days, obviously I have to charge them more often, but I don't use it every day to record uh, videos for the channel or whatnot. Um, so those days I do, like I said, I have to charge it by the afternoon and the days I don't and just kind of sit there and use it once in a while, I don't really need to charge until the end of the evening. Now, as for the iPhone 13 mini, Apple says that it will be getting an extra 1.5 hours of battery life compared to the 12 mini which is i think that's not bad like I, i'm i'm fine with it it's much better than if you even if you got like 30 minutes of extra battery life uh, an hour and a half of extra battery life compared to 12 mini is great so we'll just have to see in full review and actually try it out and see exactly how long because this is what apple says i want to see in real day use how much longer does the iPhone 13 mini hold up compared to the iPhone 12 mini? But like I said, heavy user, uh, it's it's like you're going to have to either carry like a MagSafe battery pack, portable charger, or consistently you know charge it. But if you're a light user, you don't need to really worry about battery too much. Price is important for many when picking up a smartphone, and it's uh, maybe just a little expensive. Well, let's put it this way: it was a little expensive when it first came out, and I 
kind of still think it is. I bought the 128 gigs for 780, so the 64 gigs was 730 unlocked. Uh, I paid 50 bucks more, got 128 gigs for 780 when it first came out. And I kind of wish that the price was lower since it is a mini. And that's where I think um, a lot of people kind of uh, have the idea, okay, it's a mini phone, but they don't really truly know that it's just a smaller device, but it packs the same features, the specs as its older brother, the iPhone 12. Uh, and the fact is, because of that thought, like, okay, this phone is a mini, uh, it has to be priced cheaper. But that didn't really turn out to be the case last year. Now, um, like I said, it, it's just the fact that people are expecting it to be cheaper because of that mini name. But now that the iPhone 13 is the 13 and 13 mini is out, the 12 mini now starts at 599 for 64 gigs, which I kind of still think it's it's like all right. 600. So 599 should have been the starting price, at least in my opinion, last year. But it's for this year with the 13 mini starting at 699 once again, but for double the storage. So 730 for unlocked. Um, so really, in essence, um, I kind of wish the price was just a little bit more cheaper. If you're going to ask me for 13 mini, 699, I still think it's a little too much. Uh, then the 13 starts at 799, 830 uh, for the unlocked version. So pricing could have been a little cheaper in my opinion but now since the 13 is out you can find this uh from apple's website for 5.99 for 64 gigs or maybe even cheaper from other websites as well uh and i like i said that's where the iphone 12 mini should have been priced last year when it first came out 5.99 maybe even a 5.49 but uh price if you want to get a iphone 12 mini i think now is the time to do so especially if you reflect on it with price and that's something that plays a huge role for you when you're purchasing a new smartphone so is the iphone 12 mini worth it well actually yeah it is it still is i mean there really isn't too many flaws i mean i don't think there's really any flaws other than like the the worst part of it is going to be the battery life and that's just in my usage because like i said i am a heavy user the iphone 12 mini is a powerful little device and even in 2021 it's well worth the buy and it'll easily compete with its contenders the iphone 13 mini especially for me seems to be like an s year but I think Apple kind of got rid of that uh, S naming, but whatever. Uh, you aren't really losing out on too much. I will have a comparison between both devices, the 12 mini and the 13 mini on the channel as well. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A lot of iPhone content is coming as well as iPad mini content. But seriously, take a look at the iPhone 12 mini if you haven't already, because you never know. You might just want to rock the iPhone 12 mini. Anyway, everybody, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to superman that like button, comment down below, because with the more interactions we get on this video, not only helps the video and the channel, but also pushes the video out to more viewers. And best of all, superman that subscribe button. Until next time, everybody, and until next video, this is MTG.